I'm going to shift over to Mr. Hunter for just a moment. He's going to show you how you can take a uh, how you can take a basic format in Mark Magic that you may have had for a while and add an RFID field to it and start using it. Yeah, excellent. So I've got my JMagic open here, and um, I got a price tag that uh, it's probably just the price tag that maybe you've been using for a while now, and you can actually just convert that existing Mark Magic format into an RFID enabled format. Uh, a couple simple things. First, you probably have to put the uh, required logo on it from GS1. So that's very simple, just adding a graphic, uh, nothing crazy there. So it's just a new logo that you have to put on there uh, that's required. But um, the way everything works in Mark Magic is through the same UPC data field that you've been encoding or printing for the longest time. So this UPC barcode that's 12 digits long that you've been printing, uh, we can take that same information and what we do is this this data field that's been you've been using forever. Um, now in Mark Magic there is a field called usage and you simply tag the data, the UPC data that you that you're passing already to Mark Magic. You don't even have to pass new data and reprogram anything. You just we're using existing data. So we're tagging it as build GTIN. Couldn't be any simpler than that. And that basically just triggers this whole uh, RFID brain in the Mark Magic side to um, serialize everything, organize everything, arrange the data properly so that it conforms to the standards uh, needed to create an RFID chip. Uh, so uh, you just tag your data build GTIN. And there's other um, usages here for uh, more unique use cases for RFID, but for your industry standard uh, SGTIN labels, uh, which you're probably all um, eager to do, uh, you set your data field to build GTIN. So when you do that now, uh, and when you create an RFID field, I've already got one created on here, but there would be a, a option to create RFID field up here. Um, I've created it ahead of time for you. Uh, and it's it's very, very similar to uh, creating a link field. So if you're familiar with adding a barcode and just linking it to some data and then printing a barcode, printing your UPC, it's the, kind of the same thing. You're adding an RFID barcode in, <laughs> in a sense. Uh, so we're doing star link field. Uh, there's just a couple other extra options though, very unique to RFID. Uh, all, all RFID chips need to be encoded in hex. Uh, you don't even need to worry about converting all that stuff to hex. That's some crazy stuff that even I don't get. So <laughs> let, let Mark Magic do it for you. So convert the data to hex, 96 bits worth, um, and then all the special formatting too, all the different industry standards. So uh, we've got SG10, there's others here, um, some other government required and, and, ones and, too. Yeah, and that's a good point, Ken, and, and that's a kind of a big deal when it comes to RFID or EPC encoding. So GS1 kind of has created all these different standards, which are mind-boggling, uh, which you don't have to worry about if you're using software such as Mark Magic and our Edge Magic software. We take care of different encoding schemes. Um, yeah. Good. Yeah, it's all special arrangement of the data, and oh, it's it's, but it, yeah, it, it all works when you set that data field to build GTIN and then convert to hex. Uh, and there's other options here for locking, uh, some some requirements that uh, that the data be very secure, that no one can uh, erase data on the tag as it's sitting out there. So you can do locks and unlocks. So that's all an option in Mark Magic as well. And then after you've set these fields up, there's a, a little uh, wizard. Uh, so very similar to the link panel, when you create a link field and for printing or barcoding, uh, we've got a little wizard here that takes you step by step uh, creating these um, uh, these RFID fields in, in, in the correct order. So, and if you looked at the, the G10 requirements, there's there's special segments that need to be added. But um, if we can get into those, you know, when you get the the G10 manual and uh, go in order here. But this we follow the order, um, and we just pick the data field, the UPC data field. Uh, and fill in the company prefix. Um, depending on your company, it's six in length, seven in length, or eight in length. 
Um, when you do that, then your item reference is a certain length, and we know that there's a whole table here, and we you can't mess up adding these fields in. Uh, and then the last one is you, you add your 12-digit serial number, basically just referencing the same UPC number over over and over again in this wizard, and I'm telling you it just it just works. It's pretty simple. So uh, after we've added them in, and you hit OK, you've added an RFID field to your label. So, so what just happened was that label, I mean, it became RFID enabled, but the only change you would have to make on a, as a customer is to have an RFID enabled printer. And all these printers, all these companies, so like Zebra, Avery Dennison, Datamax, and so on, Toshiba, Sato, they all have RFID enabled printers. Um, it looks just like a regular thermal printer. Um, it's just like like an extra couple hundred bucks and it has an RFID antenna actually inside of it. You wouldn't know the difference of it. And then at print time, when Mark Magic is told to print, it'll actually encode and you obviously got to load your RFID stock in there instead of just your regular labels. And at print time, we'll go ahead and encode that data uh, into the chip, as well as print all the other stuff that you're used to printing over the last number of years. So it is very quick. So, and that's kind of a big deal with, when it comes to RFID, it's all about getting the label with the data uh, on your product. And after that, you can really take advantage of things. Anything else here, Ken? Should I grab it from you? No, I think that's it. We've okay. added an RFID field, pretty simple. Okay, great.